Hey guys, what's up? I like the Tron here from One Hive Gazette here with my next video. And this one, um, I'm talking about Town Hall 9 war bases and basically the stuff you want to have inside your base. Um, obviously, have a lack of replays after the uh, update, so couldn't do any kind of war recap or any kind of uh, Clash 101 as far as attacks go. So I'm sticking to a base uh, building video. And um, in this one, I'm going to talk about just the basics for a Town Hall 9 war base. Obviously can't go too in depth. Uh, would take just too long to go through everything. But um, this video is basically going to help you get an idea. And obviously the best base is one that you build on your own because the base I'm showing you right here, as well as any other base you find online, has been three starred. I can guarantee you that. Um, so you're best off creating your own base and uh, not trying to copy this one or anything else. Uh, but anyway, this is an example. This is one of my old war bases. I no longer use it. So we're going to go ahead and use it as the example base. Um, so basically, to start off, just the general stuff, uh, CC is in the middle. Uh, some people make it so that you can lure it out with just like a hog, um, because obviously the poison spell makes it easy to take out CC troops. But I mean, you know, really what else are you putting in the middle of your base? There's not like, centered queens are no longer a thing. You keep them offset. Uh, so I think it just still makes sense to have the CC in the middle and you know if someone wants to lure out the CC make them have to invest a f You know 10 15 troop space like three hogs to do it. So um, I would make sure that it's pretty well centered in my opinion, but obviously there's other variations um, Then the offset archer queens another thing um, For the archer queen you really want to keep her away from the giant bombs, which we'll get into in a moment but you want to keep her off to the side. Uh, don't make it too easy to do a king swap or a dragon uh, swap on her. So typically you want to put these archer towers uh, guarding the queen. So that way no one can drop down a few minions or something and create a funnel. Because uh, if you have a strong layer of uh, trash buildings, like a bunch of HP along the outside here, that helps protect your queen from people creating a funnel and dropping their king in. So uh Make her offset, but don't have her too exposed. Like I have these two little compartments right here. Um, those are designed to provide some cushioning to the queen. So um, yeah, I just keep her offset and uh, you can even keep her deeper in the base. Just make sure she's not too close to your double giant bomb set, uh, which I'll talk about in just a moment. But when we're talking Town Hall 9, there's basically two different um, things that you have to worry about. Uh, you have to worry about hog attacks, which are ground attacks, mainly hogs. Are, no one really uses, no three-star strategy that is ground involves uh, no hogs usually. Like, there's no, like, go wee-wees or, you know, go vaz with valks. Um, those typically aren't good three-star strategies. So we're pretty much talking hogs when we talk ground. Then for air, there's a little bit more diversity that you have... Um, Go La Loon, which is a good option, that hybrid with the uh, Lava Hound part of the attack. And then obviously there's the Dragons, which are becoming more popular lately. Um, so there's a, little, there's a few options there. But um, I'm going to start with ground and how your base should be set up when you're uh, thinking about being attacked by someone using hogs. So obviously you want to defend against both. But talking strictly for ground attacks, you know, Go Vaho, uh, Go Ho, that type of stuff. Um, the most important defense you have are your giant bombs. Uh, these are what is really going to make or break a hog attack usually. Um, and some people have single, four single bombs, so four of them all spread out over the base. That is an option. I typically don't recommend it. I like to have at least one set of double giant bombs, and obviously you can have two if you want. But um, the thinking behind it is the four singles is that um, you, they need a heal spell for every one of those bombs unless they take one out with their kill squad. And as long as you keep the four single bombs away from the queen, typically they're going to have to use a spell to get to the queen. Then they'll only have three heal spells for your four giant bombs. Um, doesn't always exactly work out that way, but it can especially trip up a first attacker who's not expecting there, there to be four single bombs. So that's something you have to experiment with, but I'm going to talk about double giant bombs and... You can have two sets. Typically, I like to have one set and then two singles. Um, just kind of a happy medium, so to speak. Just a good combination of both. So you get the two uh, giant bombs, which kind of force a heal spell if a big group of hogs hit it. And then you have the double set, which is definitely going to take out hogs, assuming they path over it the right way. Um, so basically, for the giant, the double set, you want to make to make it so that it's away from the queen, whereas a kill squad just can't come through, take out the queen, and disable the double set. And keep in mind that 
troops don't have to walk over the double giant bombs in order to disable it. If they even take out one of the defenses that it's between, so if they take out this Tesla here, Hogs could just path in from the Wizard Tower to the Teslas, then go to that air defense, then keep going south and wrap around. So you have to have both defenses up that it's in between in order to uh, have the Hogs be taken out. So keep that in mind. You don't want a Queen to be able to snipe your double set. Um, so if, the, if this compartment wasn't here, the Queen could walk up, take out that air defense, and then boom, the, the double set's kind of been disabled. So um, that's one thing you want to think about. People have diagonal double bo giant bombs where basically the defenses are kind of juxtaposed like these two, and then you have giant bombs between them in a diagonal fashion. So you can, you can do it any way you want, but the idea is that you want your hogs to go over the long side of the double giant bombs, meaning they path over both at the same time. So you want to have non-defense troops right here, uh, you know, trash buildings, the king, whatever, um, because they make it so the hogs are going to funnel through to these defenses, then go up to the air defense, then run across at the same time and trigger both those bombs. You don't want a hog to run up and start attacking the air defense from the side here and have it trigger one bomb, have a heal spell, and then trigger the second bomb like five seconds later because it won't kill the hogs assuming they're under a heal spell. Um, so keep that in mind. That's just the basics for a double set of bombs. Um, Another good defense against hogs are spring traps. So you want to put these in between defenses where the hogs are going to go. I uh, like the bombs. You want to keep them away from the queen because uh, the, typically they don't do much against a kill squad. You can't fling off a golem or a queen or a king. So um, the, they're best against hogs. They can get up to three hogs per spring. So put them between defenses where people are likely going to put hogs through. I would not put them next to giant bombs because there's a good chance people are going to try to disable them with a kill squad in some way. So keep them away from your giant bombs for the most part and uh, places where people might send hogs through. So uh, that's basically it for spring traps. Not a whole lot to talk about. As far as single bombs go, if you have a double set, you want to keep the single bombs away. So this one is, you know, relatively far away, maybe not the best spot, but this one's definitely a good spot. The single bombs could be a little bit closer to the queen. Obviously, you don't want them in the same compartment as the queen. But you can be a little more, um, a little less cautious where you place them. And uh, the idea is that uh, a kill squad can't come in and get this double set and also get a single bomb. You want them to be spread out. So I guess a kill squad could basically get all three of these bombs if it comes in at the right angle. So maybe not the best position for this one. But um, it, it, the idea is that you want to keep them away. And also don't put two single bombs too close to each other. So if this bomb is, you know, over in this area, say it could be here, one heal spell can cover both of those. So the hogs can go in, drop a heal, they're healed up for the one bomb, then they go over to the second one, and boom, they're healed up again. So keep the giant bombs at least um, to the point where a heal spell can't cover both of them. And that'll really help uh, defend against hogs. So another strategy against hogs is the Tesla farm. So... It's basically where you put three, four Teslas really close to each other, and that is a big surprise to an attacker. Typically, you want to put it somewhere that hogs are going to go through, because the Teslas, they're your biggest damage producers. They do more damage than any defense on your base. So um, having those guys bunched up is really going to do a ton of damage to hogs. Typically, you want to uh, saturate a defense and uh, point defense on one side. It's called a kill zone. So basically, you can have a lot of point defense in one area. Like for right here, you have an Expo, a Cannon, three Teslas all in one area. And the idea is that even under a heal spell, hogs will still die because there's just too much damage coming at them. Um, so even another Cannon slid over might help. And obviously, the Wizard Tower is going to hit all the hogs at once. So um, in these areas, you might not want to have as many spring traps. The idea is that... Um, Obviously, there's a spring trap here, but the idea is that you're killing hogs basically by having so much damage that even a heal spell isn't enough to combat it. Um, so that's just another way to do it. Some people like to spread out their Teslas, which can work. It's obviously good against second attacks because if you have a Tesla farm after the first attack, everyone knows where it is. But um, the only problem with spreading them out is they really don't compromise any one part of the attack. So... Uh, it's not going to really make or break an attack, so to speak, whereas a Tesla farm can surprise people on their first attack. Uh, so that's a good thing to have. Uh, anyway, uh, I have some more stuff for hogs, but I'm going to transition into 
the air attack and when you're creating your base, uh, how you want to think about being possibly hit by uh, balloons, hounds, uh, dragons, all that stuff. So the first thing you obviously want to think about is the air defenses. They're your best defense against the air attacks. Um, that should be pretty clear. So like the giant bombs, you want to keep the air defenses away from the queen. Uh, in the old days, people would send in a few golems, uh, their heroes, and take out the queen and one or two air defenses. But you don't want that to be uh, an option anymore. So you can see right here, you know, maybe have a chance at getting this one air defense, but it's pretty deep in. And uh, typically, if it's not that easy. Um, people won't try it. So uh, you, can, you can have the air defense relatively close, but it shouldn't be within the range of the queen. So you can see right here, that one's pretty close, but uh, it's all right if it's just touching. And obviously there's some high HP buildings, which will make it tough to get in there. So uh, that one's pretty well defended. It's pretty deep into the base. And just uh, obviously don't put the air defenses right next to each other because you can be hit by uh, lightning spells and have two taken out in one uh, lightning zap or zap quake combo. So keep the air defenses spread out from each other. One important thing for the air defenses is uh, the four tile rule. So a queen walk, uh, the queen can shoot over four tiles, or sorry, three tiles. So you want them to be four tiles away from the outside wall. So right here, if you just count uh, one, and then this is three. So th this air defense is, is okay. Um, might have a problem with the queen stepping up in this corner. But that's something you have to think about. Maybe even do the math, uh, Pythagorean theorem, however you want to do it. But uh, this one's obviously good because you can see here, uh, basically one standard defense plus one tile is enough space. So if you can fit a cannon and then have one extra tile in between them, uh, you're good. That's enough space. Uh, obviously, if this air defense is up here, the queen can snipe it. So don't don't put it that close because it's it's just too easy to give them an air defense on a queen walk. Uh, you don't want to go down that road. Um, anyway, uh, for Tesla farms, those also work against uh, air attacks, especially if the Teslas are out of range of air defenses, because it means the lava hound's going to run away from them, and they'll be able to they'll be able to target balloons. This Tesla farm isn't really out of range, so maybe not the best. It's it's kind of difficult to make a base where the whole Tesla farm is not targeting. Uh, is not or there's no air defenses in range of the Tesla farm. It's kind of difficult to make a base like that, but if you can do it, it, it does work pretty well, and it'll make it so that the Teslas are targeting balloons, and they do a ton of damage, so balloons will go down pretty quickly to them. Um, as far as air sweepers go, you want to have them, uh, typically people don't have them pointing the same way, just because uh, it's too easy just to come in from behind them. So you want to have one pointing one way, uh, one pointing the other way. Don't make them too easy to get. They're not like air defenses, they're not that valuable, but they're pretty valuable, so don't just put them in an easy spot, you know, next to your queen or something. Uh, so you can see one is going to cover a counterclockwise deployment, one is going to cover a clockwise deployment. You want to uh, prevent balloons from cutting across the middle of your base, so make sure they get pushed back um, when they try to enter. So this one pushes them back on the left side, this one covers the ones on the right side. And you don't need to have them facing, you know, this way because no one's coming in from the top there by the queen. Um, as far as uh, air traps, uh, two, sometimes people like to put two of the air mines next to each other. So this air mine right here, if you stack them up, you can have two on uh, one air defense. That basically will almost kill a hound plus a few shots from the air defense will take out a hound. And that way it just kind of screws people up because the hound pops quicker than they thought it would. It's kind of taking a risk because obviously if you have two on uh, two air defenses, then the other two air defenses have no air traps. So a hound will stay up pretty long, but it's it's however you want to do it. I think it's a good strategy to use. I haven't done it on this base, but it's a newer thing. And I think um, it, it's hard to predict. So attackers can't, you know, count on one hound going in and tanking for a certain amount of time just because it could be stacked with uh, the air mines. Um, so that's it for the air mines. As far as air bombs go, um, them in wizard towers, you want to hit the balloons because flash damage isn't going to do anything against towns, although it will take out a group of balloons pretty quick. So keep the wizard towers, if you can, out of range of the air defenses. So you can see these wizard towers can't target any air defenses. This one can a little bit, uh, but that's okay. So three for four in the wizard towers. And uh, the air traps are a good thing to put next to them just to amplify the damage being done 
So you have the wizard tower doing, you know, 50 per second to each of the balloons. And this does, I don't know, 100, 150 damage all at once in a splash. So this can take out a big clump of balloons and try to make it somewhere where people aren't going to send a hound through. So if someone's going to send a hound in like that, um, maybe not the best idea to have that there. But it's always hard to uh, prevent. Some people like putting, the, putting them in twos just to increase the damage, maybe try to take out an entire group of balloons with them. It's it's like I said, it's, it's a risk with the black bombs also. You could not hit anything and you could hit something. Uh, it's just how much of a risk you want to take and kind of the defender or the base builder's choice as far as whether or not they stack those up. Um, but yeah, that's basically it for each of these specific things for each of the two attacks you're facing. Um, for, as far as <clears throat> excuse me, as far as just the other miscellaneous things, the trash buildings, which basically is everything that's not a defense, you those are pretty valuable as far as how you use them. Um, some stuff you want to use is dead space. So the king pad, um, this storage, that's dead space. It's basically making it so that hogs aren't going to path up to the giant bomb and hit it the wrong way. They're going to go um, around and hit it the long way, pathing across both of them at the same time like you want. So they're pretty good for dead space. And then also, um, you can use them for hit points. So uh, putting this town hall right here, is gonna, it's going to take a while. If you try to do a king swap and take out the queen, it's going to take the king a while to beat through that uh, town hall before he gets in and takes out the queen. And obviously it's out of range of the queen, so she's not going to aggro if the king's on it. That just helps protect the queen a little better. Um, and high HP buildings are good at doing that. They distract troops. Uh, and it takes a while for them to beat through it. Um, as far as just around the outside, your other buildings like this stuff, I would say just keep it pretty evenly spread out. Make On a queen walk, make people have to create a funnel. So on the base right here, there's no one spot where it's like, that'd be a great place to drop my queen, and she'll go one way for sure. So don't, don't make it too easy for a person doing a queen walk. Make them have to... Uh, Make them have to make a funnel with wizards or giants, uh, wizard giants or minions or whatever. Don't give them an easy funnel for the queen walk. As far as placing the king goes, he, he's a lot easier to place than the queen. You typically want to put him on the other side of the base. You can put him next to the queen to help defend her, but I, I feel like that's kind of putting all your eggs in one basket. So I'd prefer to put him on the opposite side of the base. And um, for as far as skelly traps go, if you're putting them on ground, Put them somewhere where you want to, you know, have a little more damage going on hogs. Don't put them anywhere the kill squad's going to go through uh, because it just makes it too easy uh, to take out those skellies. They do a lot more against hogs, which can't fight back. So put them where hogs will probably go, just like how you put um, spring traps. And then if you're putting them on air, same thing. Put them where balloons are probably going to go. So don't put them too close to any air defenses. Maybe put them out by these air uh, traps and try to take out a few balloons because... They'll do a lot more against balloons than against hounds, uh, so that's the best bet for them. Small bombs are basically a way to kill wall breakers at this point. You can uh, stack them all up next to a wizard tower to try to take out a group of hogs because that's a lot of splash damage. Six bombs plus wizard tower shots you can take out you know half the health of hogs pretty quickly if you want to go down that, that road. But a lot of people put them out here and put them you know one tile away from the wall so when a wall breaker runs up, uh, it'll get taken out before it's able to get its detonation off. So put them between these little trash buildings where people might send wall breakers. So that's also a good way to uh, go with that, either one you want to do. Um, CC troops, what, what you want in your CC is up to you. Uh, pretty much any combo is you know makes sense. Just because the poison spell is so powerful, uh, it's always good to try to surprise the attacker. A lot of people use Lava Hounds just because... The poison isn't going to take it out, you know, every other thing besides like a Lava Hound and a Golem can be taken out by two poisons, but uh, the Lava Hound will not, and it's better than the Golem in a way because the Queen gets distracted on it, and the King, uh, Valks, they can't help out, so it really takes out the Queen, but if someone knows it's there on the other hand, it's a, they can avoid it by not bringing their Queen in, so it's, it, you know, it's whatever you want to do, there's pros and cons to any combination, you can try to bring Witches in case they, you know, bring quakes and not a poison spell, it, it's really up to you. So uh, get creative with your CC troops, whatever fits your base, your base uh, the best, I guess, for that. 
one final thing as far as the compartments go of your base, you typically want to have, um, you don't want to have six tile compartments because that's the maximum for an earthquake spell and you want to make it so people have to invest a lot in jumping over your walls. You don't want to make it so people can drop an earthquake and open up your whole base. So anything beyond six tiles in between the two sets of walls will prevent people from using an earthquake or a jump spell. Uh, so right here, this is a, from this wall to this wall is five. Um, this is a seven, which is what you want to have from that to that because they can't use a jump spell. They can't use an earthquake spell. Um, they have to either wall breaker and then jump after that or wall breaker then use earthquakes, something like that. So um, seven tile compartments are always good. Plus you can have two defenses and put a spring trap in between them. As, as far as uh, defense placement in general, don't put two defenses right next to each other. Like right here, I know I did. Um, that's not a good thing to do because, well, first of all, a balloon can, if it comes up the right way, can drop a bomb and it can splash damage on both of those. And you don't want to uh, give that freebie to the attacker. And plus, um, it makes it so that there's no opportunity for there to be spring traps. So an attacker can just say, hey, I'll drop some hogs, take out both of these defenses, and uh, don't have to worry about spring traps. So don't give them that peace of mind, is <laughs> so to speak. Uh, make them have to worry about spring traps, and don't let the balloons get splash damage. Not a good idea to have two defenses next to each other. So, uh, yeah, that's basically it for this video. I uh, think I covered everything I wanted to talk about. Um, and, you know, ask your clan mates, say, you know, see how you would attack the base, see how other people would. That's a good way to get feedback and um, test it out in re regular wars if you're trying to get one for an arranged matchup. Um, you always want to test out the base, make sure it holds up pretty well uh, if you can. So, yeah, hope you guys find this video helpful. If you like this series, I'll, I'll keep doing some more for maybe Town Hall 9, Town Hall 8, uh, just depending on how it goes. But, uh, yeah, that's going to do it. A bit of a long video, but like I said, um, willing to do it if it helps you guys. So uh, be sure to drop a comment, and I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectatron out.